it's no secret that Joshua did not want this fight. And he didn't want it for a reason, because Deontay Wilder is the most fiercest puncher in, in boxing history, in heavyweight division history. And I saw that tonight and I felt it. No wonder AJ didn't want no part of that right hand. <laughs> he can't move like me, he'd have been nailed. Derek Chisora says that Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder holds the cards to Joshua Fury. He could stand solely stand in the way and ask for a crazy amount of money, like $80 million to step aside. I'm here to talk about that in this video. Yo, what up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. Make sure you click the link in the description to order TubeBuddy. I've been telling you guys, if you're on this platform that I've made an entire living off for over a decade, full time on YouTube, consider TubeBuddy. It doesn't matter what your genre is. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be on YouTube. It takes money to make money. You got to start thinking like an entrepreneur and invest in yourself like I did. TubeBuddy is an awesome browser extension to help you level up your content, optimize your videos so they can be found in search. A ton of features, too many for me to go on and on and on and on in this particular video, but definitely look into it. Click the link in the description. It does help the channel as well, but more importantly, it can help your channel. Now, let's talk about it. The Sun, they're reporting, it says, wow, power, Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury will not go ahead until Deontay Wilder gives the green light claims a uh, fighter in the heavyweight division, the same division we're talking about. A UK fighter at that who's about to fight in a minute um, against Joseph Parker. And let's hear the quotes from Mr. Chisora and his opinion. It says, Wilder was dethroned, whatever. Let's skip that. But Fury's side argued that Wilder's contract expired in October, allowing them to instead begin talks for undisputed title with AJ, Anthony Joshua. Wilder is still fighting his case through a mediator, and Chisora expects the American to have the final say on the Gypsy King's future. He told DAZN, quote, my opinion, let me highlight it for y'all. What y'all want, green? Okay. He told DAZN, my opinion, I keep telling everyone, you have to understand Deontay Wilder signed a three fight deal with Tyson Fury. I think he meant two fight deal because the first one, I don't think there was a rematch clause, but then they renegotiated, you know, when after Fury ducked the immediate rematch and went to top rank, they did negotiate for a two fight deal. He said the pandemic came and it shut everything down. Anthony Joshua just had a fight with Kubrat Pulev and the whole hype thing happened with this fight with Fury. But don't forget the three fight deal with Wilder. It's not going to happen because Tyson Fury, he has to fight with Wilder before everything else. So Wilder says, I'll stand aside for $80 million. Then the fight only happens when Tyson Fury fights Deontay Wilder. Says, should Fury 32 be allowed to go ahead with the unification with Joshua, Wilder is expected to at least be compensated financially. But he has been given new life in hopes of redemption negotiation as the battle drags on. Fury versus AJ signed a fight agreement in March, even though they said the fight agreement was signed last year in June 2020. Tyson Fury did a video that he has since deleted from his Instagram, along with uh, many other posts. And he said, Daniel, my boy. He said, I'm just getting off the phone with Daniel Kenahan, who's a reported crime boss. And Fury said that he has to get past Wilder. And then he has a two fight deal signed for to fight Joshua. Now, all of a sudden, they're saying they signed in March. Then we've heard Frank Warren, John Fury. They've done interviews like to the contrary, saying they need something to sign and they haven't signed. So this whole Joshua Fury nonsense is looking a mess from anybody who's, who's followed this. It says Eddie Hearn is adamant a deal to host the historic headliner is close to completion with host from Saudi Arabia three weekends um july or early august before they said in june they said a summertime i don't i don't even know if i would consider august really summer 
you know. But Fury's U.S. promoter Bob Arum has a contrasting opinion and claimed the fight was dead in the water. Arum told The Telegraph, it will take months for the Saudis to do their due diligence on such a huge deal. It is not just the site fee. There are ancillary demands from the Saudis stretching into the broadcast deals and other things. It could take months for it to all play out. It could even take until 2022 the way it is looking right now. These are comments made by Bob Arum a couple of days ago. The fight in July or August is dead in the water as far as we are concerned. The two fighters need to go and have other fights this summer while negotiations for the fight in the Middle East conclude. It is absurd what Hearn is saying that it is a done deal. Now, reports came out saying that Tyson Fury's team were sent, you know, updated drafts and stuff like that. But this is the thing. The pressure's on. There's clearly a Wilder arbitration. Derek Chisora says that Wilder holds the cards. Ego Stradamus has predicted that Wilder was the elephant in the room that old media refused to address. And they're just talking about drafts. Like, today is, I just paid my rent. Today is May 1st, right? The first of the month, right? It's the first of the month. Get up. Now, see, my sister was already there. She's going to run and go get messed there. It's the first of the month, May 1st. And they're just now talking about drafts. Meanwhile, Eddie's at a show for Joseph Parker and Derek Chisora. Then next week, he has Canelo Saunders. So, you know, that seems like a mighty crunch to be doing back-to-back -back dueling shows. You know, one in the UK, one in Texas. Canelo, who's a big name. And you're going to have to spend a lot of, um, I would imagine, energy. You have to cop a hop on a flight and stuff like that and you're talking about fury joshua is done and you expect to announce it next week we'll see the other thing that is ironic is that you have eddie hearn who is not privy to the announcement you know he's not privy to the announcement and what's going on specifically in the mediation and arbitration and literally he is the one doing the most talking so the one person who is not in this basically legal case or court case, mediation, arbitration, however you want to frame it, with a retired ex-judge, he's the one saying, oh, I'm assured it's not a problem. It's not a problem. He, so he's the one telling you it's not a problem. And that's like, let's say um, you have a security, Brinks security alarm at your home. That's like Brinks, you're, like, you're out and about and the alarm went off. And Brinks hasn't sent the cops or sent somebody to your your spot. There's no like camera or monitoring system. And then you call and say, hey, I got a notification. They said the alarm was triggered. And then the people from Brinks are like, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Nothing's wrong. It's a false alarm. But they haven't sent anyone. So you see what I'm saying? So how can you say it's a false alarm if nobody's checked up on it? Again, Eddie Hearn. How can Eddie Hearn say everything's quite all right, quite all, one more week, mate, right? One more week, mate, and I'm assured nothing could go wrong. And telling everybody the opposite of what Bob Arum's saying right now with the dead in the water comments. And look at Wilder's face while I'm at it. Bro, look at his face like this little pocket, look like a golf ball. And people think that Fury didn't cheat or do anything. His ear is bleeding. But anyway, back to the point I was making. I just want you guys to observe these things, right? Back to the point I was making. Um, the one person who's not really privy to all the details of the arbitration is the guy that's telling you rest assured. Just like I gave you the example with the Brinks. They haven't sent anyone. They haven't got confirmation that is okay. So you don't know if there, there's some burglars that broke into your, your spot or whatever. But they're telling you don't worry, don't worry. But they're not there to to check it out and make sure everything's on the up and up and that it was a false alarm. Doesn't really make too much sense to me. We will find out shortly in short order. If Eddie Hearn does not get this Joshua Fury fight done for next, he is going to look so bad. Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury and all parties involved are going to look extremely bad. And I can already see, I've already predicted, Igor Stradamus has predicted this quite a while ago, that you can already hear from the tone of what Eddie Hearn is saying now, listen to the verbiage, listen to the words. He's saying, oh, we're moving as fast as possible. 
everything's been done on my part. Um, if there are any concerns or if anything happens, it's not because of me. So this could definitely turn into a blame game, you know, a blame game of sorts where Eddie Hunter now is going to look crazy because he told everyone and guaranteed a summer fight in Saudi with undisputed fight with Joshua and Fury. And now it could be a blame game. Say, hey, me and AJ wanted the fight. It's not our fault that it's happening. But ultimately, it's 2021. There's Netflix. There's Hulu, Twitch. Eddie it will be in for a rude awakening. There's Amazon. There's a lot of stuff. The, the point I'm making is there's a lot of stuff to do in America. And we have other things to distract us. We have great athletes like Floyd Mayweather. Um, you know, you have LeBron James and Steph Curry's and stuff. There's other things. Ste San Francisco 49ers, my team. You know, we got Trey. So there's a lot of um, upside and a lot of stuff going on. Ultimately, you will be held responsible and accountable for what you said. So if you created this like fake frenzy and you can't get it done, then people are going to hold you responsible for that. It's going to be a bad look. Now, last thing I want to say, too, is make sure you smash the like button. Deontay, the bronze bomber Wilder. Look at just read this article. Derek Chisora saying he holds the cards and Fury has to go through them and stuff. And then you have people who are telling you the opposite. This is Aram and Fury flew to California to speak with the arbitrator and the Wilder. And it says the promoter admitted mediation could instead turn into fight talks. Bob Aram is telling you this. So once again, as I've said earlier in this video, Bob Aram works with Tyson Fury. He's been on record with the Telegraph, with the Athletic. He's talked to ringtv.com. And he says this mediation could turn into Wilder fight negotiations. And Eddie's telling you and promising you one more week, mate. You know, it, it, it's, it's the plot is thickening right before your eyes. But again, I would, you know, I, I'm not going to say I trust any promoter per se, because we the guys in question have all had fibs and lies and white lies and stuff that they told the, the press. But as an educated person, I would be more inclined to believe Aram saying I'm in cahoots with Frank Warren and the doubts that they've showed and the doubts that John Fury has showed and Fury's promoter who are in the actual legal dispute and arbitration with Wilder, as opposed to Eddie Hearn, who is telling you, nah, none of that will matter. There won't be an injunction, but he's not the one basically in the court or in these meetings or whatever you want to classify them as in the mediation process and the arbitration. So it just seems like mind boggling that the person who seemingly in this situation would know the least about what's going on with a whole separate situation and he admits that he just did an interview with btg and eddie hearn says oh i don't know what's going on with that but you can't just sweep that under the rug and say that's their business because you're making it your business it's, it's idiotic you're making it your business by telling people that one of the fighters that's enthralled in this thing that people like myself and Derek chisora feels creates complications you're saying that regardless of that we got a fight and it'll be announced next week and then you put it off another week and it'll be in june and then it'll be in july now it's gonna be in august so i think all those things matter so i think eddie is just buying time and you know fingers crossed hoping that the arbitration favors tyson fury but so far it doesn't look like it's good and the last thing i really got to say is Tyson Fury lied to the public and told the world that Wilder was ducking him because he knew he beat him two fights in a row. This is what he was claiming. He said, oh, you know, Wilder don't want it. Why is Wilder having to go through great lengths? And according to Derek Chisora, you know, he could ask for an astronomical amount of money, like $80 million. Why, why, why would a fighter want to pay out just to not fight somebody, especially crazy money like 80 million dollars or anything close to that that just doesn't make sense you know fight F floyd mayweather he he once famously said what you mean i always talk about money i'm a prize fighter dummy i fight for a prize so that was that was a quotable from the great tbe floyd mayweather i'm a prize fighter dummy i think it was in the shane mosley fight he said i fight for a prize so why would a fighter, instead of a prize fighter fighting for a prize, as Floyd so eloquently put it, 
Why would he be willing to pay out somebody that he's saying he can whoop easily? He's saying he didn't cheat against. He's saying there was no foul play against. And he says he's he's mincemeat and chopped liver. Why would you be willing to pay out anything close to 80 million or whatever number instead of just fighting him and actually generating an income? Because with all the drama from Wilder Fury and Glovegate and all that, it's a big fight and people will pay. I definitely want to see it. You know what I'm saying? So this is looking backwards because Fury told the world that Wilder was afraid of him and the Wilder was ducking him. But it looks like Wilder has constantly been the one pushing for clarification after the first fight ended in a draw. Wilder is the one pushing for this fight to happen while Fury, you know, is trying to maneuver out of it to the point of detriment of breaking contracts and packs and having to pay Wilder some exorbitant amount. This looks extremely bad. And this is your king. Wow. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. That is my breakdown. If this is your first time hearing my voice, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification for post notifications when I drop content like this. We're going to be working hard all year for the latest and greatest. Smash that like button. Subscribe. We work it. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.